الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله ما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله everyone how is everyone doing we back at it again with how I learn stories with another one a group one inshallah from uh, or here with uh, one of my closest brothers in uh, in Egypt الأخ حنيف السلام عليكم ورحمة الله أخي عليك السلام الله يبركه عليك الله so yeah, straight from uh, from New York, uh, we here with another one. This one, inshallah, is gonna be a a good one. We've been trying to get to it for uh, for a few days now. Uh, you know, busyness from both sides, but uh, but yeah, inshallah, we're gonna get it through right now. So uh, first of all, you guys know how it works for all the viewers, new viewers. Uh, how I learn Arabic is basically, you know, episodes where I bring up. Uh, you know, people who have successfully learned the Arabic language, most of them students of knowledge. Uh, and we basically explain you guys and share with you guys, you know, the process, how it was before, throughout, and, and how it is now. So that's what it is. Tune in, inshallah, subscribe if you want to see the, the rest of the episodes. And uh, yeah, let's get straight into it. So first of all, I want to ask Akhana uh, Hanif to give me a little bit of context, uh, context about yourself and how you learn Arabic in a general way. طيب إن شاء الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد. So like uh, the brother said, my name is Hanif Abad Rahman. You know, I'm just alhamdulillah, يعني I'm nobody special, nothing like that. You know, but alhamdulillah, Allah blessed us to uh, you know have the ragba to learn Arabic and to seek al you know, things of that nature. Um, basically, you know, I'm from New York, born and raised. Uh, I come from a yeah, a family that's not Muslim. And, and uh, you know, since I was younger, I just, you know, just loved Islam, you know. And, uh, you know, as I got in my teens or whatever, I started to, like, wanted to seek El, seek El, and, you know, for numerous reasons, mostly because of the environment who I was influenced by and you know first things first you gotta look at a lot of beer so that's basically you know Mashallah, I've never heard you so articulated like this before <laughs> I I know, you know, <laughs> Nuhawad, Nuhawad, inshallah. I've never heard the word numerous come out of your mouth mashallah you could have benefit, you could have helped me out and, and let me benefit from from the rich vocabulary طيب ان شاء الله so uh, so okay so how how you went from you know being the the random young person growing up in New York to you know to decide and go to Egypt in this case we which we didn't mention yet to go and and learn Arabic or did you even start learning Arabic before before you even go in Egypt yeah, so basically, like, I started learning Arabic, um, you know, before I left to Egypt, before I went to Egypt, you know. Um, first, you know, like I said uh, before, I was telling you that it was a brother, mashallah. Uh, he was mutakharij min jamiat al-imam. You know, he came to my area, and basically, like, that was like, I mean, I've seen other yani, imams and stuff, you know, give the khutbah and, Arabic and stuff like that in an enemy type of way, but this brother came and it was like different level, you know. Yeah. So you know he would teach us Arabic and stuff like that and just motivate us. And so I started learning Arabic with him, and then there was another brother, Abu Sumaya, Jazakallah Khairan. He used to teach in a masjid in Queens, and uh, I benefited from him a lot specifically and like you know just beginning stuff like a little nahu uh, you know big cave how look stuff like that and but it was like real slow once a week you feel me and it was just like nah i need more i gotta i gotta get it so took some private lessons with like some egyptians i found online you know just to, like everybody else and i was yeah. just until i just got tired of it and was like nah i gotta I gotta leave, I gotta go. No, 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 no. So I wanted to 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 point out two things. Uh, the the first thing 
is that what you was thinking actually this morning when I finished uh, when I finished praying uh, Fajr in the masjid? There was a they have reminders, you know, for the last nights for from the masjid who are doing his, his, uh, i'tikaf, etc. And uh, yeah. how we were talking before about like heavy weights, you know. And so I, I yeah, do see like yeah. kind of the connection between, you know, for me, for example, when I look at certain certain countries or the mashayikh or the ulama from those countries, most of the times you see the difference in their in their their way of conveying conveying ilm. And so I see right. a, a big connection between Yemen and Mauritania, for example, because it's this guy kind of like desertic, and and it does influence a lot the person how he teaches, how he behaves, etc. So we had the yeah. sheikh this morning, Akhi, after Fajr, he just sat down. He would, Akhi, it's just, you can see the difference between someone who sits down and be like, okay, with the book. Okay, uh, Alhamdulillah, today we are going to talk about, and the person who sits like this, right, right. that, and Alhamdulillah, and Alhamdulillah, say, Qala Allah Ta'ala, Qala Rasulullah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Akhi, he did boom, yeah. boom. Akhi, it came, it was so long, after Fajr, I was, I was sleepy. I wanted to sleep, I didn't sleep, I had to go, he kept throwing like you know what i mean so in terms yeah, of heavy sure. weight okay when you see these brothers it does influence you a lot and as well yesterday when we tried to record the interview that it didn't go through uh finally but i was telling you that this brother i remember my first connection to this type of world of you know seeing tulab like heavyweight it was uh it was in france i went to this masjid right and I still can mm-hmm. remember the message is literally like so humble. It's, a, it's actually a house. You step in, you go upstairs. Like no, right. it's literally like sajjal and no signs on the floor or like designs or anything. And um, and it's known that most of the brothers there, you know, they go they go Yemen, they come back. And I remember that day, me starting being a new practicing Muslim. And uh, this brother came from, uh, I was talking to this, this Spanish French brother and a brother came in the masjid. So I looked around, everyone looked around, they ran to him. And I, I realized that he came, uh, he just came from the match. And then he was explaining how they burned his kutub, al-Bukhara, whatever, you, whatever type of stories, interesting stories. And from there, I was like, subhanAllah, like, you know, like, this is actually something I really want to do, like, seek knowledge. And then the French brother, yeah. French-Spanish brother, he was like, why don't you take a, why don't you um, take a, this this ticket he showed me Qalam Voyage, which was the first uh, the first company I went with. They had a three month intensive program in Egypt, and uh, yeah. and he said, "Why don't you go Egypt?" I was like, "What the heck?" Well, anyways, um, and the second thing that I wanted to talk about is structure, right? A lot of people when they start when they start Arabic, you go online, you just look for a teacher, and most of these teachers, to be honest, you see. In, like they're just going for the salary, you know what I mean? They, it's not the problem if you get results or not. And this is the problem yeah. that I'm trying to fix with Andalus Institute. You know, like really, okay, if you see me working, if you could ask my wife, okay, I'm, I'm, my eyes, <laughs> like I don't sleep, bro. And uh, and just to find that structure, that system, systematic structure that a person comes in as in. You know, I do, I do look at it as an incubator. If you come in, you stay in the program, you go through it, you get out with the same kind of tools that we got throughout the, our first year of studying Arabic, you know? Yeah. When you yeah, like, yeah. able to be like, read a, a sentence and be like, oh, what is this word? Khalada. Uh, Khalada, okay, let me look in the dictionary. Khalada, and then you are able to f- look for the tasrif, ya khuludu, khulud, khuludan, khuldan, whatever it might be. So, uh, yeah. so yeah, definitely, I just wanted to point point that out so uh you just so, went there right now too yeah right. Ahi, because <laughs> these benefits it's like you was, so it's like you was having flashbacks in your mind yeah 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 <laughs> and, I, and i do i do refrain myself you know because i feel like i'm because it, it's really about 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 the people that i that i bring in but sometimes it's just <laughs> like i keep having these things that people really need to benefit from okay so yes. <clears throat> so once you started, once you decided to, okay, so how did it happen from, from the time where you were struggling, like, okay, I need, I need a, a teacher to, uh, you know, to teach me online or whatever it might be, to the point where mm-hmm. it was like, no, I actually need to go to Egypt myself. Yeah, it was basically like, um, you know, istimrar is barakah in it. 
You feel mm-hmm. me? Whether it's something that you're doing one week, I mean, one day a week, or you know what I mean, one one day every two weeks. If you're consistent with that, Allah will put barakah in it. But I can. If you, you know, do something every day, you know, for multiple hours a day, that's just more barakah and it's mm-hmm. more intense. You know, you want more. So it's just like, you know, it's just like doing your stuff. Some people, they got the hustle to be, you know, they want 100,000, you know what I mean? And then some people, they want 500. So mm-hmm. it was something, it was basically like that. Like, I just wanted more. And, uh, you know, I heard of brothers going to Egypt, Yemen, uh, to Saudi and these places. And I just figured Egypt was the best uh, choice. It's, you know, obviously, it's famous for the Allah and Quran mm-hmm. and stuff like that, and it was cheap. So I just said Bismillah, and you know, found some brothers, got a couple yeah. connections, and I initially wanted to go to Marquez Marquez Bedr, but it was like a problem with the second and all of that. So I I went to Askandaria first, stayed there for like a, a month or two, something like that. Which is I even went to Esbah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I went to Esba because then, you know, that wasn't my intention, but I was just there, like, you feel me? So I'm like, let me just do something. Let me just, no. just sit here and feel uh, the nice air and all of that. No, so, no, no. that's basically what happened. Mm, okay. So, um, okay, first of all, can you make sure you're in the frame? Because it's cutting your... Okay, my foot. No, we're not. Hey, no, I, will cut, I will cut this anyway. Okay, that's good. Yeah, so like you were saying, I mean, when it comes to like the difference between those who actually become fluent in Arabic and those who don't, it's literally the persistence, you know. And like the person I said, he says, "Well, khairul amali adwa muha." It's better to do something da iman, hatta wala wala than actually, you know, even if it was a little bit, than actually doing a lot. So. I mean, mm-hmm. definitely. And and the good thing about it as well is that as you, the same way you did, sometimes you got to change environment to uh, to uh, to achieve something new that you never had before. So you need to do something that you never do, did before to get yeah. something new that you never had. SubhanAllah. So, yeah, um, and, and not only that, it's just like, uh, you know, the intention obviously was to go learn, uh, um, learn Arabic and those things but you get benefits just for in life in general you know oh. what i mean like being <laughs> somewhere you know interacting with people yeah. you know i come from an environment that's like we real i wouldn't say secluded but it's like you know i hang with my own type thing like you know if yeah. we we rock we rock we don't really like mix too much yeah. so you know, you go there, it's people from all over the world. You got to, you know, deal with these people. They're going to be in your class and, you know, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So it helps you socially. You got to adapt as well. Lot, so I, Different cultures. Yeah, man. And also, it it lets you know who you are. Like, mm-hmm. like we're spoiled, especially Westerners. I don't know about you, bro. Mashallah. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> most, most like Americans and stuff like that. We spoil you, man. You think that you need this to live, that mm. to live. When in reality, it's like, that's not even the case. Like mm. One of the things I used to like care about, I mean, I'm not like super, uh, you know, on the fashion side or whatever, but I do care about like my sneakers and stuff. <laughs> then it's like, actually, why you even care? Like, it's gonna get dirty, you know? No, subhanallah, subhanallah. But subhanallah, being in places like this, like for example, right now, <laughs> okay, I don't want to put this uh, in a funny way, but like, mm. I don't, <laughs> I don't wash my clothes. I was about to say, I don't waste. Like in the UK, for example, when I was at my mom's house, just because you're so used to just throwing dirty clothes into the place where then goes into the washing machine. You literally just wear something for half an hour, sweat a little bit, or even if, whatever, you don't feel comfortable wearing it anymore, boom, you throw it there. And that's a total, you know, big waste of, of water, subhanAllah. And here, 
I, I have some Jordans here. I never wear. I, I wear them maybe once. You know, everyday sandals. My clothes, these clothes, I probably for the past three weeks I never washed it. You know, what I mean? so it makes you. It makes you, as you said, learn different things about life as well. You know, and now yeah, I, I understand go, for example, what you mean. To the UK, I'd be like, I don't need that. You know what I mean? I don't, well, I, <laughs> yeah. I don't need that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It makes you. It makes you humble. It makes you. I think the word is minimalist. I get you know? your point, but inshallah, yeah. you gotta wash your clothes, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't have wash machine. That's another thing. You know, we have a uh, hand wash. Hand wash is fine. With the hand. No. So, like, so, so before you learn, you learn Arabic, right? Uh, mm -hmm. But already decided to learn Arabic and how important it is. What was the main frustrations? that you encounter as a daily day Muslim? Um, I mean, it was just, the, you know, having somebody, you know, we have this ta'zim for, for the ulama, right? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and the sunnah, of course. And the fact that you have somebody that has to translate with the ulama are saying because they give their durus in, in, in Arabic, whether they are African or you know what I mean from India, no. you know, uh, or Arab, they give the the their lectures in Arabic, right? So you have somebody that's in between you and them. You have somebody in between you and Allah's book, between you and the hadith of the Prophet So it's just like that's daf. You know what I mean? That's like, yeah. that wasn't, you know, that wasn't like, you don't have to have that. That's yeah. a decision. That's some type of weakness that you got. Mm -hmm. It's not hard. Learn Arabic. You feel what I'm saying? Take out the translator, you know, and it, it will help you. It will benefit you. Even if you're not like a Talib al-Ilm and all of that, just in general as a regular Muslim, you know, it, it just take away the translator and inshallah, you get drinks straight from the source. No, like no, no. common sense, you know. No, subhanallah, subhanallah. I think I, I can compare that a little bit into, I mean, in between, uh, like working working for someone and and being able to have your own business and achieve the same results or even better results. You know what I mean? Why yeah. not just go and start your own thing instead of working for someone else? Type. Yeah, and I mean, you can you can kind of compare that but it's mm -hmm. it's more actually it's more dangerous because mm -hmm. you know religion and all of that has been something that people use to control other people throughout time you know what I'm saying so you have a translator or somebody that's feeding you or spoon feeding you stuff and you know you don't obviously you're not gonna dig on people's intentions and stuff like that but you make mm -hmm. yourself vulnerable you feel what I'm saying? To yeah, yeah, be manipulated, yeah, yeah. to be, you know, extorted, whatever yeah. it is that, you know, so, alhamdulillah. That's crazy. That's true because <laughs> many, ma mainly like in the West, in places like America and in the UK, you see a lot of, uh, I mean, you can see it, like the chef will say something, the person will, and I don't even know how they even dare to do that because the translation will be completely wrong. Either he understood it like that. But, you know, it was definitely not what he said. And subhanAllah, yeah. it's, uh, it's true that it, it, it helps a lot to, it, it helps to whoever uses these kind of techniques to, to uh, kind of like take, take advantage out of, out of brothers and sisters, basically. Allah Mustad. Taib, so, I think he used different methods in terms of, uh, of, uh, of learning Arabic, but what was the method you used, or at least the one you used the most, that was the the one that that was you know the best for you? I mean, you know the the journey. Well, well, we still on the journey. You feel me? So, like in the beginning, it was like I kind of combined. First, it was more of a grammar based type thing, and but I also like when I did the private classes. Uh, I studied a little bit of Arabia being a date. So, you know, I got Kelly Matt. And I used to listen a lot, a lot, you know what I mean? Listen to, like, uh, the some of the scholars that 
talk very clearly and stuff. So I always like just listen, even if I didn't understand. And, you know, so I just picked up on things. So, you know, depending on where, where I was, because I didn't go to one place and just follow that or mm. at that specific Marquez. You know, I went to mm. Eskenderia. They'd waited for my place in Marquez better. Mm. Then and after that, I went to Cairo. Then Cairo is a whole nother thing. Options. Uh, uh, yeah. So, you know. My mother said he. Yeah, Chevy. man. Like, once I met him, it was like, halas, yani. you know, he's, he changed the game, no. you know. No, it's you know, so, yeah. so what would you say was the three main things that helped you to become fluent at it and be able to, you know, understand average conversation, etc., etc.? Well, I'm still working on fluency, <clears throat> but in general, uh, me, I, I feel like, you know, listening a lot, you know, because that's one thing, too, that I had, like, a pet peeve. Uh, is like pronunciation. You know, yeah. it's like you hear somebody speaking Arabic and it's just like, subhanAllah. And, you know, not that you're looking down on people or whatever, but you just like, even when you yourself pronounce something, you know that thing, that didn't really sound right. Like, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I like listening a lot because I try to like, you know, take the uslub, the way that the, the Arabs talk, the uslub, um reading reading different things i mean i wasn't like an od reader but you know i did read things like Qasas and Nariyin, you know mm -hmm. what i mean like those little small books and stuff like that and um yeah that's basically it listening a lot man mm -hmm. listen what, everything. what about using it what about using it and practicing i mean yeah like i feel like it was stages for me you know, because, mm -hmm. you know, I had to, specifically in Egypt, I had to, like, learn, like, how to move, basically, like, through experience. Like, mm -hmm. you, mashallah, you you know, you know different languages, so you can chill with the French people, get a little, you know, how they move. You can, you know, <laughs> I, well, it wasn't that many Spanish people, but then you had the English, so you could deal with the American and British and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Me, I was just like... Uh, you know, I was like more to myself, <laughs> you feel me? So yeah. I just wanted to do my own thing, learn my own way. So, um, yeah, I forgot what you, what was the question? Yeah, like, uh, like using it, you know, like you actually practice it, oh, spoke oh, yeah. it. Yeah, so yeah, so yeah, so it was like stages, right? So in Egypt, it was like, all right, I started opening up. And Marcus better, I used it more because mm -hmm. it was like, it wasn't that many like Westerners, like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? I used them more, but uh, to be honest, like the brothers, a lot of the brothers there was just like me, just in the beginning, trying to learn and stuff like that. So they, uh, we was all du'afa, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So we all du'afa trying to speak to each other. It's mm -hmm. beautiful, I like it, you know? So then, uh, as we got better, Cairo is a little bit more, um, doing my own thing, uh, just speaking to different people. I opened up a little bit more. Um, Ustaz Mahmoud, Allahu Akbar. He's like, not just the durus, yeah, his usloop, you mm. know what I'm saying, and how he talks and everything. Like, that helped me a lot, like, you know. And then, alhamdulillah, when we uh, went to Shuridiyah and started, like, you know, getting like cool with like real Arabs and stuff like that. No. It was like, it helped a lot, you know, the different words they use. Like we would just, we would use one word, but they would use another, you know what I'm saying? So just talking to them, that's when I, you know, basically no. start using it more. And it benefited, mashallah. Istabra, I studied, I studied, to read, to read. No. Tayyip, so yeah. I was basically trying to base my put my uh, point my prove my point as well as because we do have three only things that matters in order for you know the people in my program to become fluent in Arabic, which is memorizing new vocabulary, hearing it being used, and using it yourself. Mm -hmm. That's all it matters to uh, 
you know, to, to fluency, basically. And, you know, when you said, uh, I used to listen a lot, I mean, it's, there's nothing else to it. You just, you just listen to it, try to understand it. Once you learn that vocabulary, it, comes, it pops up to your mind. Like, oh, yeah, I know, I know that. I just memorized that word. And then, boom, you go ahead yeah, and yeah. Try, try and use it. It's exactly how you how it would come fluent in Arabic. It's, it's so simple that, uh, that it, makes me, it makes me stress when I see like other Arabic instructors. Okay, today, like people they didn't even know like Muqtada al Khabar Hada Jamilun. They will be explaining them like, uh, pff, I don't know, like Tamiz, you know what I mean? Or Al Arqam, Wal Mu'annas, and Yani, they can Mudakir Fal. And I'll be like, SubhanAllah, you never learn like this. You, you spend two years learning all of these things. At the end of the day, you won't be. And I say this as well because a lot of um, students that when I talk to them, that's what they say. I've studied, I've studied book, you know, three books of uh, Medina books, but I, can't, I still can't talk. Mm. I'm like, oh, yeah. like, how did you go through that? How, how did the teacher uh, teach you? I mean, but, yeah. to be honest, like at the end of the, at the end of the day. It's a skill, right? So a skill, you have to practice it. Like it has to be developed. So mm. you know what I mean. That's that's just what it is. If you don't develop the skill, it's, it's not gonna be strong. So no, 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 definitely, yeah. definitely. But the real thing is that there's no a lot of people they think, oh no, but you just obviously people they have different advantages and whatnot. But there is no biological or nor logical reason why a person couldn't go from zero to to fluency in, in Arabic. In, in Arabic, you know what I mean? Because uh, I mean, otherwise it would be a it would be a a min Allah. Hatta wala wala kana if Allah made someone not fluent, type it could be maybe because he's abstaining him from a, from a khair. But in general. There's no reason why mm -hmm. you couldn't, why you couldn't come fluent. Yeah, Africa. definitely not, man. In Egypt, you see, Ajayat, you, know, you see somebody come there, like, they don't even know, I live bad tat, three yeah. months, they're like, subhanAllah, they're like speaking and everything, yeah. specifically the people that don't come from the West. Yeah, and no. you be like, subhanAllah, what is this guy doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Now with consistency, you see crazy stuff. I remember when I first went to Egypt, it was three monthly intensive program. I left to get married, stayed outside of Egypt for four months, got married, came back with my wife, yeah. and then I spent like, what, nine months or 10 months, something like that. And, uh, and uh, when I came back after these three months, I seen the brother that I was with in class, and uh, they were already, <laughs> Like yeah. I was like, yo, how did how did that happen? So if like consistency, yeah. Subhanallah. They say they say so. I don't know. Nah, bila shak, bila shak. They say self discipline is the only skill required to master another skill or something like that. So uh, mm. so yeah, if you have self discipline, focus on that. And bila shak and tawfiq is you know the first thing to ask well, Subhanallah. Yeah. And abstaining from yeah. from sin. I remember the first year I didn't, have, didn't even have a phone, you know, no Instagram, Allah. no things like that. Shahid. Subhanallah, but it does make a big, big difference, you know. Subhanallah. Yeah. Wow. Um. So, so how did how long did you did you study did you study the the Arabic language for, or what was the time frame that made you feel like, okay, I have enough right now to actually go ahead and and change field and go into Hivd or go into whatever it might be? Well, the, the way I think or the way I look at it is that, you know, I didn't really change, you know, I'm still learning Arabic in a sense. The only thing is that um, if this is what you mean, I learned enough Arabic so that I can learn like more Arabic in Arabic or does that make sense? Like, no, you know what I'm trying one, to say? Like, that's one thing, yeah. Yeah, so like um, I don't know. I guess I just felt it. Like I think maybe it was like uh, Ustad Mahmoud. To be honest, it was like when he when I met him, or when I went to his dars, 
and I understood what he was saying, and it was just like easy. I was like, play it, inshallah. Like it's time, you know. But yeah. throughout it all, the hiv and all of that different stuff, that it it helps you. You know what I mean? Like if you memorize the Quran while you learn the Arabic, then it will be, it will help you in your Arabic. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Especially with the Quran. No. Let alone the, the shi'r and the whatever else you do, but the Quran it has barakah. Mm. You know, so if you if you memorize the Quran, then it's gonna make you speak Arabic better. Mm. You know, you're gonna be able to when you learn words, you're gonna be like, oh, I remember this ayah right here. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? So it, it just helps you. And mm. uh, and nah. Yeah. So I mean, but, I mean, me know, personally. Yeah. Like a istimrad thing, you know. No, no, no. For me personally, I'm completely against that. Like doing two things at the same time, mainly hibd, because I feel like Arabic is hibd within itself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and Quran, if I just can't, can't. You know, I remember trying out. I, I, it's just no. I think you achieve more. So one of our in Andalus Institute, one of our core principles, the sixth one is simplicity. So doing less. Is actually doing more, and the seventh is focus. So do less, better. And I think that yeah. if you apply that into knowledge as well, and I mean, you know, man ramal ilma jumlatan dhahaba anhu jumlatan as well. Whoever tries to acquire, yeah. for, you know, all knowledge at once, it will go from him all at once. So I think me personally, and I think the human, the human mind and brain as well is, is meant to, to work on. Uh, and one main thing, if you really want to do that thing well, you know. And I mean, as well, the Prophet said when he said, "Inna Allah yuhibbu abdan ida amila amalan and yilqinahu." You know, Allah loves the slave that when he does something, he does it in his in his perfection or in the best manner. So that's what I yeah. advise. Definitely, definitely with like definitely that's you know that's true. You know, it's just. Mm-hmm. The way everybody has their little, uh, you know, their different ways of looking at it and, mm. and uh, you know, going about it. But my point was, is just like, him is helping you to develop your skill. You know what mm. I mean? So like, or just reading. Say, because sometimes like people don't, let's not, let's not use him al Quran. Let's just say your, your daily word in the Quran. You no. read in the Quran because if you learn the Arabic, you have to read the Quran. Mm-hmm. Period. You know, mm-hmm. so just by you reading it, what is that doing? That's helping you in your reading of Arabic. You know, it's no. helping you like you know, it's you start to uh, read faster. You know what I mean? Your your tongue and all of that. So you know, because at the end of the day, is a is a is a novel. It's, a, it's it's like a shi'r, You know, mm-hmm. it's. It's a, it's a biat of, of another man. So I remember Abdul Tawab. I don't know if you met Abdul Tawab in Iskandaria. Abdul Tawab. I think so. Uh, did he go to Darul Ulum? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, I, I met him in Cairo, mashallah. Yeah, he was my teacher to the point where I became so attached that I used to call myself, no, I am Abdul Tawabi. I am Abdul Tawabi. <laughs> because there was different opinions in between Abdullah, Ustad Abdullah and Abdul Tawab in terms of different aspects in grammar. So I would I would always take the his right, his opinion. So what I was trying to say is that uh I forgot. I completely forgot. But anyways, um oh yeah, what I was trying to say is that he used to advise me to memorize uh, share because yani you say al istiqam al lisan it helps you to remove that you know that westernized accent that that you have basically mm-hmm. and i mean quran yeah. when you memorize quran subhanallah you memorize in vocabulary and then of the day this is how the sahaba they used to learn arabic as well. i actually need to do that what memorize share yeah i need to do that man no and uh, and the Sahaba they used to say, "Mimma warada minhum uh, uh, We used to memorize the Quran. The, we used to memorize. We used to learn Arabic. How we used to memorize. How we used to learn the Quran. So basically, through memorizing. As well, Ibn Abbas he said, 
uh, I didn't I didn't know ma fatir as samawati wal ard until I heard a woman from the Arab use it in a sentence. Sure. And then he understood and al ma'na yani abdatu aw bada'tu. So uh, definitely yeah. I mean memorizing the Quran is is uh, is definitely and I don't know if you've seen the there is a, there was an interview that I did with the sister Fatima from Houston, Texas. She, she basically went to Egypt in, in for one year. She focused on eight month eight month she she completed the Quran. She had like five Jews, she completed them. Then four months all in Arabic. And and I spoke sure. to her after in Arabic after like four years without her practicing. And subhanAllah, you know, you can mm. feel that like when you remember the Quran, first of all it opens your brain, then you, you, you have a bunch of vocabulary already. <clears throat> In between an ittakhada and dhahaba, sayyara. I mean, all is in there. You know, you have a bunch of vocabulary in there already. No. Mm. So, uh, mm. Taib, so what would you rate your conversational skills from 1 to 10 without being humble? And why is that? Why is it? Conversational skills. I would say maybe 4.5, maybe a 5, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Man, that, yani, that, 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 that. It's just who you comparing yourself to. You know yeah. me? Yeah, definitely. Like, you definitely. Know? To the average Western, I guess. Obviously, remember you those, you remember to those, uh, those, uh, those African brothers, man. I met some, some African brothers, mashallah. You talk, yeah, you talk to them, you just like, you think you in like, Mustawal Awal. You like you feel what I'm saying? <laughs> no. Subhanallah. Yeah, sure. I remember our brother. I think you might have heard of him. I've never heard of him anymore. I remember he's he was in studying with Sheikh Islam for like for five four years. Abdul Mutakabir, mm. I think it was. I remember at that yeah, time inshallah. I don't know if my Arabic was super daif or what, or his Arabic was crazy. But I remember listening to him and acting like I understand. And he was like, tell me if you don't understand something, yeah? Because I... And... Yeah. You know, obviously, if you compare yourself to, like, Sheikh Rasla, you know... Yeah, and it, it, it's not even too... It's not even about the, the, the words you use, you know? It's mm -hmm. just your, your fluency. A lot of... You know, most mm -hmm. of us, we... To be honest, our Arabic is broken. You know, mm -hmm. we still have that stutter... We still have the yani, yani, yani. You know what I mean? And uh, <laughs> to, to you know, it's not even about using big words. You know, using big words and all of that. That's not even the yani, yani, uh, yani. From balada is to be really easy. When you're talking to people, they understand what you're saying. They get your point. Sorry. If you want to use, it's just like in English. You start talking like Shakespeare and all of that. No. People gonna look at you like, like, what are you talking about? You know? No, no, no. No, definitely, definitely. I mean, that's what fluency is really like being able to not stutter and think two times yeah. about what you want to say. Taib, so, uh, so what would you say you enjoy more, uh, private classes or group classes? Well, I, um, I mean, I enjoy both of them, you know, they both have pros and cons, but mm. I think it depends on the subject. Like in for Nahu, I I, I like the um, private classes because mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah and Nahu, Nahu is it's easy Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So you wanna like go, you know what I mean? You wanna no. you wanna go and then you were in a class and this this guy is just like you know. <laughs> <laughs> but if you like doing soft was kind of hard. Soft is hard for me. No. You know. So, like, I'd rather be in a group class if we're doing sort of or something. Um, and obviously, if you're in a group class, you know, you get to practice more or see uh, how somebody else chooses to say something. So mm -hmm. you benefit from how they articulate themselves, you know, how they, they no. so it helps you in, in, like, speaking. And it also makes you, like, not be so shy, you know, so no. you got to, like, Participate, obviously. No, no, definitely. Okay, group classes. Sometimes I remember in the beginning it was like, yo, okay, like that's what made me be like, yo, I'm, I'm, I remember in Isbah, it was in Isbah. I started group classes, 
So I don't know if because I knew well, it's definitely that definitely helped because I knew different languages and I already have like the ha <laughs> in Spanish and uh, you know different yeah. aspects of of the Arabic language. And then I jump into mm. private classes. And mainly when you have t a time frame that you want to finish this book before whatever happens, you'll be like, yo, I can't, I can't, the teacher, like, you need to go over the book now, like. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Subhanallah. Yeah, sometimes so, we. <laughs> so in terms of, uh, do, you, do you have like, uh, you know, like main books that you always had with you, like to translate or to look for something or different dictionaries or whatever it might be? Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say always had with me, but I used a lot. Um, the dictionary, the handswear, the handswear dictionary, you know, the green one. Yeah. That's like, mashallah, that's a really good uh, dictionary. If you know how to use it. In the beginning, obviously, I didn't know how to use it. So I was using just the regular, uh, I forgot, the Maurid, you mm. know, those dictionaries. But the handswear is nice when you go like a little further because it's like, first of all, obviously you got to know how to break down a word to get to its root. Mm. And then from there, it gives you all the different uh, awzan and the different, like the things that branches off of the, mm. the, the root. You know? So that was good. And... Um, also, just, you know, um, yeah, that's basically it. As, well, as far as, like, regular books to, like, read and stuff like that, then, obviously, you know, I always tried to read the Quran, even though I was uh, deficient, mm -hmm. you know, but um, Qasas and Nabiyin, mashallah, mm -hmm. that's really good, man. They have a lot of kalimat and words you could just, if you see a word, you be like, you know, let me look that up. So, it's like, mm -hmm. you, you benefit. Mm. That's the point. That's the point that I that where you gonna get where you want to get or you know where people wants to get like to be able to read something as you said as you said like I've read enough uh, I've learned enough Arabic to now learn more Arabic in Arabic. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's a, right. that's a super technical beneficial uh, yeah, and sentence. I, I say that only because. You know, we, like, you know, mashallah, man, bless you. Allah bless you and what you're trying to do. But, you know, we just trying to motivate, motivate people. And at the same time, not sugarcoat anything. Because, you know, like, when I first went to Egypt, or I don't know about anywhere else, but Egypt, you know, sometimes we have the idea that you go to the markets, you finish the markets. Khalas, yeah. Khalas, yeah. And an Arab, yeah. That's not the case. The, the purpose of the markets is to get you fluent enough so that you can learn Arabic in Arab in Arabic no, at a higher no. level. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Mm -mm -mm -mm. That's that's completely true, man. Completely true. I that's mean. basically what you what you doing. You and you just helping people, mashallah, because you've been through it. You know, no. mashallah. No, no, no. Plus, I mean, I realized that you know the like after going through. I mean, my wife as well, she, she completed Ibana. You know, I completed, mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't complete it, but I went through the whole program of Al-Isbah. And, uh, yeah. and at the end of the day, you really, like, I remember in the beginning, it was like, you know, you, you, you kind of need to be guided. Like, you don't know what you're doing in the class. You don't know what's coming up. But like at level six, seven, eight, it's like, like we used to go class, you know the words the whole vocabulary will be on on the on the board already we come we write it down and the rest of the class is literally a fa'ida from al fi ibn malik or or a whole bab or a whole yeah. bait or whatever it might be and then literally we just stalk and and i realized mm -hmm. that to get these results you can achieve that through through online if you really if you really want it you know what I mean? Like, at the end of the day, online classes is not for everyone because I think you need a certain, you know, certain level of discipline, self-discipline to follow, to push yeah, yourself, etc. But, uh, but I was like, okay, let me take all of this that we went through in Egypt and put it into mm -hmm. an, online, an online platform. And I mean, you know, people, if they want to check it out, if you go to andalusinstitute.com slash reviews, you see that most of the students who went, who reviewed the program, who went Egypt before, 
most of them they say, oh, it reminds me of of my of my days in Egypt because it's exactly the same the same uh, methods, you know. طيب على كل حال may Allah put barakah. Amen, amen, amen. Barakallah fiq. So okay, so you, you already mentioned this, but you said I'm still gonna ask you what was the hardest part of of learning Arabic. Or the hardest subject. The hardest, the hardest part. Uh, the hardest subject, you know, is for me is self. No. The self has been kind of hard. But you know, do you I'm feel? I'm still trying to get better. Do you? Like, me, uh, I feel the same. You no, know, it's it's self, you know. No, I feel like Naho is easier to me, mm. and self is difficult, but it's difficult to actually understand. And pick it up and memorize it. But I feel like, like you know it. Like for example, if I tell you, you know, what is the mudar and the wasn of in fa'ala for the for the mudar, mm -hmm. you probably know, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What is it? In fa'ala. What you say? Say say it again. I said the the mudar like when. You know, for example, to ask myself, uh, I mean, what I was trying to say is that the sar for me is, uh, is the most difficult as well. But I feel like we know it, you know, because if I tell you, if I tell you, okay, what is the mudari of uh, Nasara? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, so. But then it's hard to like take the rules and... And put it on a board and tell you, okay, these are the rules of soccer. Yeah, you know exactly. That's that's yeah. my problem too. It's like, no. but it's no, it's pra it's just practice, you know. Like no. as long as we, you know, we stick to it and stuff like that. And that and that's the point, right? That's what you're trying to get to to the people is that you know sometimes things may be hard, and no. but you got to stick to it. You know what no. I mean? You got to put in the work, and inshallah, Allah will open it up for you. You know, no, no, the definitely. end of the day. So, last two questions. How of an impact do you feel like the Arabic language has had in your life? MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. Big impact, man. You know, it's, it's, it's Izza, you know? Yeah. It makes you more confident, you know? MashaAllah, like, it makes you, uh, you know, grateful. Obviously, it changed the way you think because you understand these uh these ayat and, and all of this stuff in a different way mm. not you know different from if you was you know listening to some english uh, lecture or whatever or not even lecture like even just reading the the, the noble quran mm. you know like when you read it in arabic and even though we're not like masters of the arabic language yet but we alhamdulillah we reach a certain level where if you read something like uh Something like, you know, like when you say uh, Allah is Ghafoor or Rahim, no. you know, in English, you're going to translate Allah is most forgiving, Kevin. And, you know, it's not a bad translation, but like in, in Arabic, you like, that's no. <laughs> You know what I mean? It's like, no. it just hits you different, you feel me? No, no, no. And then no. not only that, it uh, gives you like a little, you know, it like, raise your head up. For lack like mm -hmm. of better words, like, you know what I mean? You don't, you don't need to, uh, you don't need this brother, or or that brother. You can listen to the ulama, whoever it is that you choose to listen to, and uh, take it from the end directly. No, that's priceless, man. Money can't, money can't buy that. No, no, definitely, definitely, swallah. So. Uh, I was thinking about a thousand things at the same time. I tell you, that's crazy, man. That's crazy because because uh, it is. It, it does a change. Oh yeah, what I wanted to mention is something really important that I don't feel like me. For example, after coming back, and I feel that every student of knowledge goes through this. When you leave the West, you spend a full few years, uh, you know, focus on talab al ilm and you know, used to the adhan, etc. And then you come back to the West. It hits you so hard 
that me personally, I was like, Alhamdulillah, that I know Arabic and that I have this little knowledge that I have that is helping me to to bring up oh, my iman if I want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Subhanallah. Yeah, and I feel like if you don't know Arabic, I feel like if you don't know Arabic, it's, it's hard because, I don't know, I don't, I remember, I've never read myself the Quran in Spanish. I remember the first time mm. opening it, I didn't even understand words are incredulous, Kufar is incredulous, I don't even know what incredulous is. You know, I mean, I, yeah. I, I, I straight away closed it. And I feel like, subhanAllah, it, it does, it, it's, it's like a wiqaya from, from irtidat, you know, Sahih. from like fisk and, and things like that. It gives you some type of haya and some type of muru'a. Yeah, so for those who don't sure know, al haya it helps is, uh, with your conscious. No. <clears throat> what is al haya in English? Uh, Chinese, right? Al haya. Yeah, Chinese. And then al muru'a is kind of like self respect, things that you won't do. Yeah. That yeah, something. Not and see, hard. like, I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because that's exactly like what I mean. Like, because uh, I ac actually asked this question recently to, mm -hmm. mashallah, his brother, uh, Marua. And the way you explain it, it's like a concept. You mm -hmm. feel what I'm saying? But it's, in, Ar in Arabic, you, I mean, when you translate it to English, it's like you got to come up with another word. But it's mm -hmm. a concept that's understand. Yeah. So if you know Arabic, you understand the concept. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And it's like the same thing with like, uh, well, I don't know, like if this is a good example, but qana, mm -hmm. you know, we translate as contentment. Mm -hmm. But to me, it's like a concept, man, because uh, in English, it's not all the time used in a in a in a good way. Mm -hmm. Like if you say somebody's content with their situation, that means like. He doesn't have that hustle, you know no. what I'm saying? He's good no, no. with just like you on your wave, like he's good with a nine to five. Hello, and you, no. <laughs> you look at it like for Qana'a and our, you know, in in our uh, in Islam can be most of the time is used in a good way. No, if that you know if that makes any sense. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. But the concept when I understood Murua, I was like, Subhanallah, that changed me as well. It made me grow up yeah. and more mature and you know you stop doing things that you you would do when you alone just because of of the muru'ah you'd be like man i can't i can't be knowing whatever amount of ajzah and still doing these things when i'm by myself <laughs> you know or you know I, whatever I like. you, mean, you know what i mean and when i'm talking i'm not even talking okay i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna give an example so for example and how them, yani, leave the nas, fakat, just to benefit people. So the moro, for example, what I have gained. Before, for example, I used I used to dance myself, right, when I was younger. So this is something that is hard to remove out of you. It's hard to just just go from completely being in the hip hop culture, doing whatever you're doing, and then become a talib lame and expect to change from one day to another. So there is things that I. You know, I would, if, you know, shake a little moves or whatever. And, and what Muru'a does, it makes you feel like... Mamado. Like, it makes you... Al Muru'a is like, you be like, subhanAllah, like, Allah has blessed me with this amount of ajza and having, being able to know ah. all of this ayat in my heart and, and being able to be fluent in Arabic and pick up books and understand the qual of the salaf and this and that. I cannot be behaving like this. Even Acting if you're like by yourself, fool, right? <laughs> you know what I mean. Even if you're by yourself, whatever it might be. So that's 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 al muru'a, like to me, you know. Ad yeah, true. Ad but see, look, look, mashallah. You see how you just explained that in English? It was just like you got to give a story. No, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> Arabic just makes everything easy. Yeah, that's it's it. From... Muru'a, Adi. No. Eh, kada, you know. Alhamdulillah. Uh, so the last the last question is what will you, what would your advice be for the person that knows and acknowledges the importance of learning Arabic, however for whatever, whatever reason they haven't started yet. Um, my advice would be first to approach it as an obligation. Mm -hmm. You know, there's uh, 
you know, it's an obligation on every Muslim to learn Arabic. That's not something that's, you know, that you have a uh, ikhtiyar. You know. No. So that's you take that opinion, huh? Of course. <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, obviously, that doesn't mean you have to be sibawe, but yeah. I can, come on. It's a, it, like you said, maru'a, you're a Muslim. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you should know Arabic. Have some, mm-hmm. you know, some some edza, some self respect for yourself. No. You know, it's a, it's a it's a daf to not know Arabic. You know, and I'm not, I don't mean like be sib away and all of that. You mm-hmm. know, but just to have basic level of of, of, of Arabic is yani la bud. Um, so that's one thing. Approach it as an obligation. You're doing mm-hmm. something that Allah wants from you. You know what I mean? And um, he's going to help you, you know? So that's that's the first thing. Second thing is, as in regards to these different asbab, these different means, like you have, mashallah, your, your program online, this marquez, that marquez, this country, that country. You know, it's, it's all going to depend on who you're influenced by and who... Basically, who you look up to as, and who you look for guidance from. They're going to tell you, because some people are going to tell you, look, take the Al-Iban away. Some mm-hmm. people are going to say, take the, the Al-Fajr or whatever way. You feel what I'm no. saying? And that's what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. And that's cool. But I can just understand that all of these different things are as bad. They're means to an end. No. You know what I mean? And they they're not, they help you to achieve the goal. But at the end of the day, it is Allah that gives you tawfiq. So you can go to the best school, you can have the best teacher, like Muhammad, you know, <laughs> and all of that, you can have it all all there. But at the end of the day, it's Allah that gives you tawfiq. You know what I'm saying? So why are you taking the best sabr to get to your goal? You have to, you know, constantly make du'a, obviously put in the work, can't be lazy and all of that good stuff like everybody say. No. But take these, take these as bad as they are and depend on Allah and ask Allah for tawfiq. And, you know, and he's going to he's gonna help you. you know, no matter how hard you feel it may be in the beginning, no matter how much money you have to pay or whatever, like, you know, you pay the money, you get it back, inshallah. The no. thing that you're gonna learn is is, is is more than what you're paying at the no. end of the day. You know what I'm saying? And inshallah, like that's basically my advice would be no. and to just work hard, man, and just have some type of, you know, is no, You know no, what I mean? Like, no. it's it's whack to be honest. It's whack to be, you know, uh, average. You no, know, listen, yeah, average, man. Yeah. Like, come on, man. He wants to be average. No, mid yeah, level. Don't be, uh, don't be content. No. <laughs> don't be content with this da'a. No. You know, and specifically to, you know, our brothers in the West, uh, you know, uh, African Americans specifically, or anybody in the West, for that matter, and everybody else around the world, the Africans, uh, and, and especially Senegal, mashallah, we, the Loga, Mm. But like, what's up? You know, you gotta like step up and you know take the take this you know do the sacrifice that you have to do and you know just try to like raise the the, the ignorance of uh, your community, of yourself, of your family, whatever it is. And you know, Muhammad, you here to help people that's you know in their beginning stages or whatever. Inshallah, Allah give us all tawfiq. No, 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 definitely, definitely. Alhamdulillah, for your for your advice, Akhi. And we came to an end. Uh, Alhamdulillah, that was a beneficial one. And I hope that people will benefit from. So to the, all the viewers, I hope you guys uh, enjoyed this interview. And uh, and I would recommend you to subscribe for the for the ones coming. So Barakallah Fik Ya Khana Hanif. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alaikum wa rahmatullah. Habib. Okay.